This video is brought to you by CatBeast.com. Design your own custom snapbacks and hats. Hello and welcome back to South Park Explained here on No Bullshit. Well, 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 it's been a good long while since we've done a video in our South Park series here. And, well, with the new season of the show starting in a couple weeks, I thought we would bring this thing back a bit early and catch up on some older but still relevant classic episodes. But first, let me thank Cat Beast again for sponsoring today's video. They've got awesome custom hats at affordable prices, and without their sponsorship, this show might not even be possible. You see, another quick side note here before we get going. Recently, we had a copyright troll company claim almost all of my South Park videos here on YouTube. That's over 30 videos in this South Park Explained series, covering the last two seasons of the show and much more. But now the hack liars and thieves at Sony ATV have claimed all my South Park videos. So that means I'm not making any ad revenue on this series at all anymore, at least on the past videos. And this also means unfortunately going forward, we're going to have to be more careful and not use as many clips of the actual show. Not the end of the world since we only used a few seconds here and there before, but it is a little disappointing. And it is frustrating to lose ownership of your own videos, which I put hours of hard work into, and I'm losing it to some company who basically did nothing. Screw you, Sony ATV, is all I have to say here. And also, you're welcome. They're getting the money made from previous South Park Explained videos now, but have no fear, y'all. The show still must go on. I do ask that you guys kindly consider donating to the show to help Help keep things afloat, all things considered. I've got a Patreon link where you can donate for as low as $1 a month, and there's also a PayPal link below for a one-time donation. Thanks in advance, because without support from viewers like you, scumbags like Sony ATV would surely get this show shut down. Great, now that all of that's out of the way, let's finally get into today's South Park episode. It's called Make Love Not Warcraft, and it's a classic South Park episode from Season 10 that came out in October 2006, and although that's almost 13 13 years ago now, the episode is still more relevant than ever, actually. Not only is the PC gaming trend still alive and well out there, and bigger than ever in fact, but also, the World of Warcraft game has made a big comeback in these past few weeks as well. Recently, the games maker Blizzard finally re-released WoW Classic, which is basically them re-releasing the original World of Warcraft that came out back in 2004, which was only a few years before this South Park episode aired. An episode that went on to become legendary itself as well. In fact, in fact, there's a funny backstory to this South Park episode that most people don't even know about. Make Love Not Warcraft actually had a pretty troubled production process, as far as South Park episodes are concerned. Usually the creators, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, they make their episodes in the week leading up to the release, but with this one they needed more time for a few reasons, most of which had to do with the special new animation style. You see, a large portion of this episode is actually animated with video game World of Warcraft footage. This machinima-like production process process proved to be a bit more time consuming than most South Park episodes, so they had to delay this one's release a few times. Fortunately, South Park had complete and total cooperation from the WoW Games company Blizzard, who surprisingly assisted in the production here greatly, even giving South Park access to private servers and special versions of the game's software to help with their machinima recordings. But this new animation style wasn't the only issue here. The episode's writer and director Trey Parker was also deeply unhappy with the episode's creation direction all the way up until the day before it was broadcast. That day he even told the show's producers, quote, I've lost it, I don't know how to do this anymore. Trey even begged executive producer Ann Garofino to call Comedy Central and inform them that the show would not air, remarking, I don't want the South Park legacy to be ruined, and this show is going to ruin it because it's so bad. Parker went home unable to sleep the night before, but he was happily surprised the following day when the episode was so well received. In fact, Make Love Not Warcraft went on to become one of the the highest rated and most popular episodes in South Park's history, which also very much helped reinvigorate the fans of the show and its creators. And it started what I would even call a modern renaissance of South Park. Yes, this episode paved the way for future episodes to not only comment on other popular video games of the time, but also it gave the South Park team the confidence it needed to keep going and to continue taking risks in style, animation, and topic choices moving forward into its future and into our present. And as we all know, South Park is still going 
going strong to this day, and it has a new season premiering in a few weeks. And this is all in part because of classic episodes like Make Love Not Warcraft, which set the groundwork and kept the laughs going for this amazing show. So without further ado, let's finally get to the specific plot details of this one and see where this story goes. Things start off with the South Park boys playing their new favorite game, World of Warcraft of course, also sometimes called WoW, W-O-W, its initials. But things don't quite look like South Park at all in the beginning. As I mentioned earlier, much of this episode is animated with the actual engine of the WoW game, and this introduction starts things off with that too. And while the game footage might seem a little retro now, this was actually top of the line graphics, at least for online multiplayer games like this one, particularly ones with large open worlds. You see, massively multiplayer online role-playing games, or MMORPGs, is what they're commonly called now, and these games were certainly never more popular or relevant than they were in 2006, when this episode came out and a few years after the World of Warcraft came out, one of the most famous MMORPGs of all time. Basically, MMORPGs are a combination of role-playing games and massive multiplayer online games, in which a very large number of players interact with one another in a virtual game world. And as in all role-playing games or RPGs, the player assumes the role of a character, often in a fantasy world or science fiction one, and then they take control over many of the character's actions. MMORPGs are distinguished from single-player or small multiplayer online RPGs by the number of players able to interact together in the world, and by the game's persistent world too, usually hosted by the game's publisher on a server. And this is a world that continues to exist and evolve while the player is offline away from the game too. Basically, WoW is an ongoing world that keeps going night and day on the internet. Players log in and get involved when they can, but that world also keeps turning and churning, and people come and go and do their own stories 24-7. WoW was obviously one of the biggest games in the industry too, as the game and servers are still running to this day. Things have changed a lot over the last decade though, and that means that the game's online world has changed a lot too. Not only have the graphics, gameplay mechanics, and in-game stories gone through vast changes over the years, but also, the WoW world has changed a ton too, adding and changing many locations and the kinds of characters and enemies within them as well. And this is why, after all these years, many have asked WoW's company Blizzard to re-release and host an original version of the first World of Warcraft game. And as I said earlier, about two weeks ago, Blizzard did just that. So now, in 2019, people are jumping back into classic WoW once again. And so I think that means it's a rather fitting time that we revisit this classic WoW South Park episode as well. After our brief intro with the South Park boys and their video game World of Warcraft team, Stan then gets interrupted in the real world by his dad Randy. Randy worries that Stan's been on the computer too much, suggesting he go out and play with his friends. This prompts a curt and stern response from Stan, explaining to his dad that he is in fact already playing with his friends. They're just playing online while they voice chat while playing the World of Warcraft game. Stan even briefly goes over the MMORPG stuff which we just discussed too. But it's worth noting that the South Park writers here always get their games and the terms and the kids' terminology down pat perfectly. I'm able to keep up too since, although I've never played WoW myself, I was extremely familiar with it and had friends who played it at the time. And South Park really plays all these games they parody too, and it always shows in the way they specifically talk about it in the game's own terms, which I always enjoy, enthusiastically. Next, we meet a new character for the show, and quite possibly one of the greatest side characters in South Park history. Jenkins is his official name, which we find out later, but he's also known as the Griefer, and well, he's the famous super nerd character from South Park. He's an older, very pale, somewhat overweight, and super gamer dude with acne all over his face. And in this episode, Jenkins is the main antagonist too. He's some kind of crazy good expert player in the world of Warcraft, and instead of playing nice and doing his own thing, Jenkins instead decides to go around killing everyone else's characters, including the South Park boys. Later, even the game's company Blizzard can't stop him, as Jenkins rolls through the game killing everyone and spoiling all their fun. And this is pretty much exactly where the term griefer comes from too. Griefing is when players purposely antagonize and annoy or even kill other players' characters in online games. And Jenkins and his griefing becomes so bad, he becomes the main villain of this episode too. And also, with this episode's legendary status, that ends up making this nerd guy character one of the most classic South Park characters of all time. Later on in the show, Jenkins even comes back a few times, making a cameo appearance in the Britney's New Look episode, and also, he becomes a main character in Season 20's Troll Trace storyline. But back to today's episode. After the boys get their characters killed, they decide to try and stop the griefer themselves. Cartman moves to gather all 
all the kids in town together, and they all mount an assault that ultimately fails miserably. This results in a new plan. Carmen convinces Stan, Kyle, and Kenny to join him on a lengthy training session. He calculates if they play the game for 21 hours a day, every day, while killing small boars for experience points, well, after two months, their characters might have leveled up enough to beat that big griefer guy. And this training session turns into a pretty amazing training montage, reminiscent of a Rocky movie or something. But instead of working out and practicing a real sport, the South Park boys train in the World of Warcraft video game. And as they do, we see the game footage and their characters grow, while also seeing a lot of time pass in the kids' real world too. And in the background, a perfect song plays. An upbeat rock tune plays in the background called Live to Win by Paul Stanley. Also, Live to Win was the name of his second studio album. And Paul Stanley is, of course, known for singing in the band Kiss as well. Another cool note about this song is that it appeared on South Park 20 days before the album's actual release. And I think it fit into this scene perfectly, adding an amazing soundtrack to one of my favorite South Park scenes of all time. In the end, all this training and wow still wasn't enough to stop Jenkins the griefer though. Fortunately though, the game's makers at Blizzard had been monitoring this situation too. As I mentioned earlier, Blizzard wants the griefer gone as well because he's upsetting their customers immensely. So when they see the boys in South Park are leveling up like crazy and they might be able to stop the griefer then, well, Blizzard decides to intervene by trying to give the boys a new weapon that will help them beat the griefer. And here's where the sword of a thousand truths comes into play. As the boys begin their final fight with the griefer Jenkins, Blizzard's employees desperately try to help them by giving them this new weapon. There's only one problem here though. None of the Blizzard employees actually have World of Warcraft accounts. They jokingly say they don't have them because they have actual lives. And this results in them traveling to the South Park town itself to try and deliver the sword in person, first going to Stan's house. Randy answers the door when they arrive, but Stan's not there. But fortunately, come to find out, Randy does have a WoW account himself, so they decide to give him the sword so Randy can try and transfer it to Stan within the game. The sword is contained on a USB flash drive right now, by the way. But Randy doesn't have a computer at their house now, so him and the Blizzard guys decide to go to Best Buy to try and log in and pass the sword off there. By the way, this ending in the real world is all taken very seriously and dramatically by both the Blizzard team and eventually Randy when he joins them. They act like they are saving the real world, even going so far as to commandeer another guy's car like they're police officers or something in some kind of high-speed life or death chase. Then, when they reach Best Buy, Randy immediately takes out some random kid who he pushes to the floor because he was on the computer Randy's trying to log into. They eventually get into the world of Warcraft where Randy even hands over the sword to his son Stan. The griefer quickly stabs Randy afterwards though, but thankfully, with the sword of a thousand truths in hand, Stan finally slashes Jenkins the griefer, killing him and accomplishing their long-awaited goal. Randy's character is dying quickly though, and after their victory, Stan comforts his dad's character as he dies in his own character's arms. This part is also taken way too seriously for comedic effect, of course. And I always love how the South Park characters act out their WoW characters' deaths here, with these dramatic last words and dying noises and stuff. Pretty hilarious. All in all, another very classic episode of South Park here, with them playing a game called WoW Classic now, funny enough. And while there's not much political stuff going on here, that's okay too. I think the pop culture commentary and the references to a long-running MMORPG game that just had a re-release a few weeks ago, well, that makes this thing relevant enough. I hope you guys appreciated this episode and enjoy something that's a little different, but still interesting and completely related to what's going on in 2019. Things sure have changed a lot in South Park and in gaming since then, since 2006 when this came out, but also, at the same time, many things are still the same. What do you guys think? Is this one of your favorite South Park episodes? Did you ever play the game World of Warcraft? And what do you think about the new season of South Park that's starting on September 25th? What new episodes could be coming out? Comment your thoughts on everything below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and we'll see you all next time.